So hello, um, my name is Martin Matuška. I'm a FreeBSD developer from Slovakia, living currently in Berlin, Germany. And the topic I'm going to talk today about is called Foreman. And actually deploying FreeBSD systems with Foreman. So let's take a look at a very short overview about my talk. At the very beginning, I will introduce Foreman and what it's all about. <laughs> and then I will continue with talking about MFS BSD and how they play together. And then I reserved some time for showing you how it actually works. I have it in my VirtualBox environment on this laptop. And I will show you how Foreman creates a free BSD host and uh, how the procedures work, how it integrates with Puppet and similar stuff like this. So let's take a look. Um, we have here the logos of FreeBSD. We have the logo of Foreman. And I have allowed myself to combine these two. So, <laughs> so <laughs> we have his FreeBSD with a helmet. Uh, Foreman, the name of Foreman actually expresses what this software does. So it's you know kind of a boss who, told, who tells other things what they should do. And if he does it correctly, we should have some output, something built. So we are like building hosts, and uh, that's why it's called Foreman. So uh, what is Foreman? Um, it is a lifecycle management and orchestration tool. So the job of Foreman is to manage hosts from their creation or configuration up to their end. So like destroying a host. And Foreman should like cover watching this host from the very start to the very end. Uh, is it designed to manage distributed architectures, multi-site? So you have like a one single Foreman installation, and you can manage hosts at several places, several domains, and so on. So it's a central tool. That, of course, doesn't mean that you can also have more Foreman installation. It's no problem. And uh, the main job is it does unattended system installations, so simply Everything is done automated. It's an automation tool. Um, the three keywords here are deployment of hosts, configuration management of hosts, and some kind of basic monitoring. So Foreman collects reports and facts from Puppet, and you have kind of an overview over your installation. Where does Foreman come from? Uh, the project was founded in 2009 by an Israeli programmer, Ohad Levi. Uh, at, the, at the moment, he was living in Singapore, actually. And I have met him now in February in Ghent, in Ghent, in Netherlands. And um, at the moment he founded this project, it had nothing to do with Red Hat. So it was just, it was, it, he, you know, it's like, uh, like Eric showed us in Bambi meets Godzilla. So there is need for something, so let's make an open source project. So this is the way how it was created. And uh, then one day came Godzilla, but instead of you know like punching him, they said, "Oh, we are offering you a job. <laughs> so come to us with your with your Foreman project, and we will we will add you to our payroll." payroll. So th that happened, and um, it is now a Red Hat community project. As as we know, Red Hat supports open source development, so it's developed in an open source fashion. It is going to be a key component of the new Red Hat Satellite SEC server, so it's very important for Red Hat that it works correctly and so on, so it, they put a lot of resources in it. But what I'm really impressed, they leave quite a lot of freedom to the people in Foreman. So like when I discussed with them FreeBSD support, gave them patches and so on, they have integrated them. So it's like not, we are now doing only Red Hat and stuff and Linux or whatever. And if there's some kinds of strange BS what comes here, uh, we are not in. No, they do that and they also, give some preliminary support even for Windows systems, yeah, like unattended installations of Windows machines and managing them over this one single interface. So um, let's come to some technical information. So what is it? It's actually a Ruby on Rails server. Nothing more and nothing less. So a simple web application for men that is doing some background tasks. Uh, the back database backend is PostgreSQL. Um, all of that is included in an embedded, embedded installation that's automatically installed by Foreman. And it has a very tight integration with Puppet. 
but the, as I have spoken to the developers, almost all of them have been in this uh, config management camp in February in Netherlands. Uh, they don't want to stay that tight with Puppet and they want to be open for other configuration management tools as well. And there is already preliminary chef support available, of course, partially thanks to me, because in my company we are using Foreman with Chef. <laughs> so it's like that. Okay, now Foreman, Foreman has two primary components, the Foreman server itself, and then there are systems called smart proxies. I will show you later what these are. But these two components are the key components you always need to run Foreman. Uh, about host OS, uh, there is an automated installer using integrated Puppet uh, available for Red Hat or CentOS Linux. And for FreeBSD, there's only things I have started and there is also Michael Mo helping me doing this. We have, for, the, for starters, a smart proxy port. So on FreeBSD, a full, fully working smart proxy can be deployed. So let's take a look at the architecture of Foreman. So uh, Foreman is the central component, so it's designed to be a single instance. Of course, you can run more Foreman instances, but each of them has separate configurations, separate setups and everything. Here you can like, reuse the common components for all of your deployments your site has. It provides a web interface and a RESTful API, so if you have your own applications and want to instruct Foreman to do something, you can do it via this API. The main job of it is to perform orchestration tasks. It includes creating hosts, destroying hosts, changing the states of hosts, internal states, like is a host going to be built? Is it already built? Um, updating parameters like IP address and stuff, so it's capable of doing even these management tasks. And of course, somehow deliver this information to these hosts. The hosts that are to be deployed, and also possibly hosts that are already de deployed. It is, it is possible. So next main job, you know, manage the smart proxies. So you are the foreman and you have your minions and your minions have to do your, what you tell them and without your workers, you cannot build anything. So foreman just alone is not able to build a host. And of course, talking to all the other people necessary in a construction, all the suppliers and stuff like that and that's the, all the APIs, so like, uh, creating host using some interfaces like VMware and so on, it's, this is supported. So, and last but not least, Foreman is extendable with various plugins. Um, what does it mean? There are plugins for the UI, so you can like extend the UI using some integrated hooks, adding new menus and stuff. And there are also special, there's a special program called Foreman plugins and this extends the orchestration. So you can now tell him before building a host run this script or after building a host do this or in the phase of building a host at this moment do something. So you can like really very fine, there is a fine graduate control over the whole process what, what, what is done there. So let's go to the smart proxies. Uh, smart proxies are deployed decentrally so they are on every site where Foreman is to be deployed. Why? First of all, they provide all the basic services needed to set up a host. So we have DHCP, so it talks to the ISC DHCP daemon and even Microsoft servers, so you can run, run actually smart proxy on a Microsoft machine and talk to MS DHCP and DNS. Uh, DNS is via the classical dynamic updates protocol, so bind works very well. Uh, this is a provider I have written, again, because of my employer and so on. They have a Microsoft uh, architecture, even if it accepts dynamic updates, but our fancy Microsoft administrators have simply configured, well, when it expires, let's delete these entries. I mean, we don't need them. So we have like created entries with uh, foreman and 10 days, in 10 days, they are, no host names are registered because uh, leads have expired, so whatever, yeah. So, uh, I had to create a provider that creates static Microsoft entries. So, uh, yeah. I, I, I personally consider it unnecessary, but it had to be done. <laughs> Good, we have TH, T, T, TFTP. Uh, that's the classical TFTP daemon, can be used in FreeBSD and Linux. What Foreman does is really only putting files into the THTP uh, boot directory, which is served. So actually it doesn't manage the daemon at all. 
Uh, then we have BMC. Uh, BMC is utilized to manage hardware hosts. So you can like power up a host using the standard BM, uh, IPME, IPME, or you can shut down the host. I think no other functionality is currently implemented. But it's very important because these ways you can like, I, I guess also reset is possible. I'm, I'm not sure. But you can uh, like power it off and then power it on again and it, it might get re reinstalled if you want to reinstall a hardware host without manual intervention. And then finally, as it's a Puppet integration, we have something like a pu Puppet CA on each of the smart proxies. So you can, you can distribute your Puppet installation over your whole architecture. So you have like a single host, but these Puppet CAs for these individual systems you are deploying are located at the sites, so not on the center location, but locally. So here is a nice picture done from Foreman to show you the architecture. So the very key component in the very middle is Foreman. Here we can see API or the web user talking to it. We have the database backend. It is capable to talk to LDAP or AD for user authentication. So we can like get user accounts from, from the company structure. Um, then we have uh, the proxies. Um, not each of the proxies has to supply all of the features. So we can hear, we can see here, this one proxy has only Puppet CA, this one proxy here, for example, only Microsoft DNS, and this is a multifunction proxy that delivers like several of the services. Foreman now talks to all of these services in different networks or in a segmented networks, and this makes sure that we, it's possible to deploy hosts. Now, how to deploy hosts? We can see here there are several interfaces available via APIs to create VMware or OpenStack or Amazon EC2. So it works even on Amazon. So what systems can be deployed with Foreman? So first of all, it's in Foreman it's called a hardware system. In, when I say hardware system, it doesn't have to be real hardware. In, in, in Foreman terminology, it's actually any system with a MAC address that can boot via DHCP. So it can be a virtual system as well, but Foreman doesn't manage like creating it and destroying it. So you simply give him this MAC address and uh, it simply configures the DHCP server for this machine to boot with a specific configuration. Here, Foreman does not manage the full life cycle, so Foreman is not capable of recycling your hardware, so you have to do it yourself. And um, on the other hand, we have the virtual systems, and here Foreman manages a full life cycle. Uh, all of them are contacted via the Ruby FOC library, it's called FOC, and it's the cloud library for Ruby to, to speak to all of these services. So Amazon EC2, <laughs> Google Compute, Libbeer, DoubleStack, Ovid, Rackspace, vSphere. These are actually the main ones supported by Foreman, but FOC does support more. So it might happen if there is interest that additional providers might get integrated. When, when the FOC functionality is already there, because for some parts, even for vSphere in my, at my company, the FOC wasn't completely okay. So I had to add patches to FOC and add patches to Foreman to make it completely, to make it work correctly. But now it's fine. <laughs> it's usable at the moment. Good. Uh, how is Foreman configured? I will show you later really directly how does it look like, how does the UI look like, what we are actually doing there. But now I simply tell you shortly about some keyboards. So we have, it's divided into three points, infrastructure, provisioning, and configuration. Uh, what are these? Infrastructure, uh, we, here we have domains. So domain is a central, pa central part, in, takes a central role in Foreman. With domains, all hosts has to be a member of a domain. Even subnets have to be associated with a domain. So a domain might have several subnets and uh, lots of hosts. Uh, the domain also is served by the DNS server. So it has to be something the DNS servers served here support. It might be a virtual one. For my, for my demonstration later, I have created a VBOX domain, a top level domain for, for my virtual box here. But it might be also a real domain. Then we have subnets. It's a simple subnet configuration where you, where you tell the system uh, all the networking data about the subnet and also you tell him, please 
make my host only from IP address 100 to 200 or whatever at the very end. Then we have compute resources. Uh, these are act the actual connections to the systems like vSphere and so on. So you have like, to enter some kind of address, login and data so foreman can talk to these systems. So you enter all the credentials here. And then we have something like compute profiles. That's new. That has been added in Foreman 1.4. And with compute profiles, you can find, you can, when, you, when you create host definitions, you can also say how should the host look like in vSphere. That was not possible before. Before you had to enter all the data each time, like how much memory has, should the host have, uh, how big is the disk, what storage space to use for the disk. You can like pre-configure all of this in several host groups now. And if you create a host in this group, it automatically gets all of this data. So uh, provisioning, we have operating systems. Uh, the core operating system of Foreman is of course Linux. So you have like many Linux flowers, but Windows and now also FreeBSD are supported. We have provisioning templates. Uh, that's actually the, I would say the key feature of Foreman because these provisioning templates are like script driven variably created instruction sets for the individual host how should they build themselves it's very important they have to be supported by the boot image so if you are creating linux hosts for example for red hat it uses this kickstart configuration so there is a kickstart script that's downloaded by the by the installer and then it's executed and freebsd i am currently using a self crafted uh, uh, scripts that uses this, but it's also possible to write something to use a PCC install configuration script for automated deployment. So we'll, you will use the very same PCC install script as other people use for automated deployment. But it's not well documented. The documentation for PCC install automated de deployment is not yet really done or really available. So even, even if I heard in previous talks that FreeBSD is well documented, there are still, there is, there are still things missing. So <laughs> there is still work to be done. Okay, um, installation media, that's, that's uh, web URLs that point to, uh, to your media. For FreeBSD, I have simply a URL that points to my base TXG and kernel TXZ, the TXZ and kernel TXZ. That's everything you need to deploy a FreeBSD system. And uh, at the end, architectures, uh, the, it's, it's, it's just a, it's a placeholder, I would say, but in general, it uses this Linux terminology, x86-64 and i386. Uh, but it does, doesn't really do nothing. It, it just adds, nay, it adds this architecture name to some variables. That's everything it does. So configuration, we have these host groups, very important. That's something, it can be nested. That's where you define how your host should look like. What should they do? What are the member of? Which is their smart proxy that manages them and so on. Then we have environments. That's already that comes from Puppet, but I'm using it for Chef as well. So you say your host is the production host, is it a development host or testing or whatever. You can create as many as, as you want. It's then processed by Puppet. So Puppet then knows this is production environment, so this host is in the production environment, so use these classes and this configuration. Um, and last but not least are smart variables. That's something I really like. The smart variables are actually used to render these templates. So you can like define any variables you like uh, on a different levels. So you can like say on global level, my installation URL is this. On host group level, it's different. So it simply takes the global level, then looks, do I have something like this in the host group level? Yes. So it overrides it with this variable. So you have like such a variable tree and the very bottom one is used. So at the host level, that's the very bottom one. So if you define a variable at the host level, it takes, it has, it is, it has priority. So this one is used. If there is no defined, it simply looks up and up and up, up to the global variables. And if there is no variable, then you have a problem. <laughs> You have to write your script in a way that if you expect not having this variable set, that uh, the Ruby understands that. Because if you simply do that, you get an error and nothing happens. Your systems don't get deployed. So how does the deployment process work? So let's take a look. So at the very beginning, uh, we have to configure the host. So like a host group or something. 
and then Foreman creates this host. So it has adds an entry, depending on if you are using hardware or not hardware. If you are using hardware, it's simply a representation in Foreman. If you are using virtual systems, it does really create this host in this in this in this system. It uses transactions, transactional logic for all of the steps. So, for example, it starts like uh, creating a DHCP entry, DNS entry, and then it tries to set up the host on vSphere, for example. And now it finds out it's not possible for whatever reason. So it like rolls back. So it deletes the DHCP entry, deletes the DNS entry, and this way this this whole creation process is a transaction. So it's like roll back. So if any of the uh, in the in the series of the commands that are executed, any of them fails, there is a chain that rolls back everything that has been done. So like you don't end up in a state that you have like created DNS entries and DHCP entries and TFTP and whatever, but you are not able to make the host in vSphere or in Amazon EC2 for whatever reason, like your credentials are not valid anymore or something. So it's a it's rolled back. So that's something I also like. You don't have to clean up the cleanup process is done by Foreman. So the host boosts via DHCP and TFTP, and uh, some kind of boot image is loaded. And this, the job of this boot image, you have to pass parameters to it, or it has to be pre-configured somehow to download via HTTP or HTTPS this provisioning script for, from Foreman. It's simply a web page that's given only to a specific IP address, so not everyone can request that. And using this web page, you are then uh, it's simply a script or something that's downloaded, and how it is processed is up to the image. So it, in, in uh, Red Hat, it's processed differently. On Ubuntu, it's processed differently. In FreePSD, we also process it differently. Uh, later, the host performs installation and configuration tasks according to the script. So it like whatever installs additional packages, configures the network, DNS servers, and the information what should be configured that might be provided by the smart parameters or the network configuration. So in your subnet, you say, this is my DNS server. I will show you later in this script, a variable will be used. So you don't simply give him the direct IP address, but just a variable. So this way, you can reuse this script for all your FreeBSD or other installations. Very important, Foreman is then told that the host has been built. Because if you don't do this, and you simply restart the host, it boots over the HCP again and starts the whole the installation process again, and you have an endless loop. I have experienced an endless loop many times here, so it's very important. This has to be done properly. Foreman has to be told. Another point, if something fails in here, then you should also somehow tell or not tell Foreman, because if you, if you told him it's built, then in Foreman you see a host that's fine, this has been done, built, but in reality it failed somewhere in this process and the, the host actually in this process because it's outside Foreman, it's done in the image, also in the in the deployed system. So you have to tell it somehow that it, uh, that there was an error. So uh, then after doing all of this, Puppet or Chef or something is run and reports and facts are submitted to Foreman. So Foreman like collects reports and facts from these systems and you have a nice overview and you take a look, is my system healthy? Is it okay? Are there any problems? And so on. So now shortly about MFS BSD. So uh, what is MFS BSD? It's actually tool sets to create MFS root based distributions of FreeBSD. Nothing more and nothing less. So it's a set of a make file, some tools, some scripts. And uh, these distributions run completely from memory. Starting with FreeBSD 10, finally when we have dynamic NKVT. That was something I was waiting for for a very long time. Um, I can actually run a full FreeBSD out of it. So I don't have to modify anything, just take the base kernel compress the whole FreeBSD installation as it is, and it simply loads into MFS, uh, into memory, and we do not need any disks. <laughs> so no disk drives, and that's very useful for like deploying systems, or it's actually used for boot and rescue images by some dedicated server providers. One of them is Hetzner in Germany, or OVH in France, what I heard, so several use this MFS BSD to provide FreeBSD support for their servers. Because this way you can load a rescue image where is a, some kind of a root password set by a script and then the user can log in and look, hey, what if I messed up? Why does my system not boot? So they provide it for 
hardware and virtual systems. So they use it in all cases. So it's actually adopted already <laughs> in the industry. Okay, uh, what do we do with MFS BSD and Foreman? Uh, we need to customize it. So the simple MFS BSD that comes out of the box, the standard images I create cannot be used. Uh, we need some kind of a special startup script. I'm using RC Local for this. That does this job like downloading the instruction set from Foreman, processing it somehow, doing something, because otherwise nothing happens. The big problem I had, and I have solved it in a workaround by now, how should I tell the image where to download the script from? That's quite a problem, because in Linux you have like something like these boot parameters you add to group at the very beginning, and you tell him, my kickstart script is located here. FreeBSD is not so easy, because we cannot really give in some kind of command line, I mean not by hand, but automatically tell our bootloader, you have this special variable set it, please, without giving him a file. We can give him a file, okay, he reads it, but we cannot tell him it's in some kind other way, like a parameter or something. So that's that's a problem. So at the moment, uh, I'm using is quite hackish. I have a comment in the DH in the in the PXE boot DHCP definition, and uh, the image simply at very first downloads from its smart proxy because it's already known that's it's, that's the DHCP boot server. Downloads downloads the TFTP uh, this this uh, TFTP file via TFTP looks into this comment. What is my URL and then downloads? So it's like a kind of a workaround, but I do not know. Oh, sorry. So I, I do not know yet how to how to solve this for the future. I don't know if we will add some support to our FreeBSD loader or if there is another way how to solve this. So that's something that's my question then to you later. <laughs> Good. Uh, the foreman URL is downloaded from 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 a source. And uh, this provisioning data has to be somehow processed. So let's sum it up. We require the form and configuration. So we need operating system, FreeBSD definition of what is this FreeBSD, where do I download my sources from, and so on. We need the provision template. So what is to be done? We need the host group. So each host has to be a member of a host group. It's not possible to create hosts that are not member of a host group. Good. Uh, then we boot via memdisk at the moment. So this MFS BSD image is loaded via memdisk. It's then booted uh, and, and run. Name of the image currently is FreeBSD minus architecture. This has to be the Linux notation at the moment. And release is, for example, 10.0 minus MFS IMG. Here you have an example file you can try out at home if you want that's, that's already pre-created and does all this stuff with this workaround in the RC local. And now we can take a look at the sample template. So this is what I was talking about. This is my workaround. I simply add a comment saying form an URL is kind of a variable that's replaced by Foreman, and then simple memdisk configuration. This is actually a syslinux file. Syslinux uses this to boot FreeBSD, chain boot it using memdisk. So we have your kernel memdisk, and this init rd is actually replaced by Foreman with this name of the image and path to it. So it's like this, this thing. Um, that's the simple script, and now let's come, to how does my example provisioning script look like? So I have my fancy two scripts, I won't tell more about them, you can take a look at them if you are using MFS BSD. One of them is this Distrojum, it's a cleaning script that you give him simply one or more drives, and it uses then the geom command uh, to, uh, gpart command to like wipe out everything of it it finds, so like destroys all the partitions and subpartition, but in a, in a correct way, not just like using DD, but doing it the right way. And um, later, we can hear here, we, I have a Z, a ZFS install that also a script of mine to simply have one command line script that installs whole FreeBSD on a system using ZFS on root. 
So this system install it on, installs it on a ADA0 disk drive. I tell him what is my desired swap size. And here again, I'm using a foreman variable. Where should I download my base TXG and TXZ and uh, kernel TXZ from? Uh, then I'm setting a root password. Uh, I had to investigate a little to find out how to set a FreeBSD root password in one line without doing anything. So uh, you can do it like this. It works. Uh, in this case, this root password is already encrypted. So it's already a hash. And this way, you can do it without PW asking you anything. So it's simply done. Then we configure our rcconf, so I'm setting a host name. Again, Ruby syntax of the templates of Foreman. So Foreman adds this for me. I'm configuring here some kind of, this is for VMware here, but uh, I should also figure out a way how to automate the network configuration to make it for, for, for all network cards. But here we have a special network card of a special brand. Um, again, basic configuration. I add the default router. I want SSHD to run and NTPD to run. I want the root to be capable to log in. So simply, it's simple. Uh, why I'm using MNT, that's kind of MFS BSD. So if you install with ZFS install in MFS BSD, then your whole system is located in MNT. And MNT is the installed system, so you can, you can CH root in it, but you don't have to. So you can like talk to it directly. So the second part of this script, I'm also configuring resolve conf, and here I'm already using Ruby logic in the script, so I'm telling it, if there is a secondary DNS, add it, otherwise, please leave them empty. Uh, so here I'm setting my name servers. Uh, here I'm setting a time zone, what wasn't very good for uh, here when I was testing it, because the host immediately complains, I'm eight hours out of sync. <laughs> so, have to change that, and at the very end, this is the magic that tells Foreman uh, I'm done. The URL is again replaced by Foreman. Originally, Foreman uses widget, but we don't have widget in FreeBSD, so I mean, fetch can do it as well. So I'm using fetch for it. Very important, I have added sleep five seconds, please, so that Foreman can like unconfigure DHCP in a timely manner. Otherwise, if it takes some time, you might have a problem again that the system starts booting and the DHCP is disabled after the system starts booting. So we don't want that either. Okay, um, let's come to the demonstration part. So, uh, yeah. So this is how the login screen of Foreman 1.4 looks like. They have ch they change they have changed the looks. So 1.3 was different. So I log in as root. And at the very beginning, when you get into Foreman, uh, you have here a overview screen. So it's kind of, it's called dashboard. At the moment, I don't really have any host there. So it's like only himself seeing there. And all of the configuration and management is done in this in these menus, submenus at the top. So here can we see this infrastructure part. So we have the smart proxies. At the moment, there is only one smart proxy running on the very same host as the system. Um, we can see the features of the smart proxy. So it's providing TFTP, DNS, DHCP, Puppet. Here we can like import subnets from the proxy. So if the proxy has DHCP for configuration for some subnets, we can import the, this configuration and we don't have to configure it ourselves. Then we have something called certificates. That's puppet certificates that have been issued. Uh, good. Then we have compute resources, but this is empty. But if you create one, you simply select the provider, but I haven't installed support for any providers, so it's not available. That means also we don't need compute profiles. I simply don't have vSphere on my notebook here, so <laughs> it wouldn't be reasonable. So we have subnets. I have created here a simple subnet configuration where we can see again, we have a name, network address, mask, gateway, DNS server, stuff like that. All of that is used in, in rendering the provisioning templates. Uh, 
it's member of a domain and some proxies. Here in all cases, it's just a single proxy for my VBOX that handles this subnet. Uh, domains, it's simply a list of domains that are included and we can see also how many hosts are member of a specific domain. Good. Uh, the, all the magic happens actually here in the host groups where I have created a free BSD host group. And if you take a look at the configuration, I have at the moment only a single environment production. Uh, then we have some puppet configuration that's all done by the same server. And we have the network, so it's a member of a domain, member of a subnet, and operating system. So we have the architecture at the moment, this x86, 64, and operating system is FreeBSD 10.0. Media, I have configured here a mirror, that's a local mirror for me. And I have a partition table, this is just a placeholder, in my script doesn't use it at all. And here I can set a root password I want. This is the default root password. If you are creating a host, you can specify your own. But this is the default. So let's make uh, a fancy root password called tour or test, whatever. So, so it's now updated, this host group. And now we have these parameters that are empty because I'm not using any. Environment is this production environment. And here in Puppet classes, uh, it's also empty. At the moment, I have only a like a simple set of classes here, just for demonstration. Good. So let's take a look at the hosts. Uh, Foreman usually sees itself as a host, so you can we can see here Foreman.vbox. It's running on a CentOS systems. It, I do not have a port yet in FreeBSD for it. It requires quite a lot of Ruby gems that have to be also ported, so it's quite a lot of amount of work. So I don't have that yet, but it, we are already able to deploy FreeBSD hosts. So here I have a FreeBSD host. I do not want it anymore. So let's wipe it out. So it's now deleted. And um, we might now want to create a FreeBSD host. I will switch to VirtualBox right now. Okay. And for this purpose, I have created a VirtualBox host, a second one, using an internal network interface or a host only adapter, actually, so we can SSH to this host as well. And um, some, some memory settings, like here, one, one gigabyte of memory storage here at 10 gigabyte drive. At the moment I have already deployed this host once, but that's no problem. It can be deployed as many times as we want. So it simply boots from DHCP and uh, gets installed. So what do we need now for this demonstration to show it in Foreman? Actually, we need only this MAC address, as I've been telling. So we have to go into the network menu, look under advanced addons and copy it. Then we go to Foreman and say we are making a new host. Um, let's give it the name demo or something. This host will be member of a host group, which is pre-configured, and that, that like fills all of the remaining boxes with the standard configurations, which can be changed. So you can say this one particular host will have different configuration as the others. Uh, we are not using any classes here, just for demonstration, and here, on the network, in the network tab, now comes the MAC address. So I give the address, but it wants it with the dots. Oh, 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 oh. So. OK. Domain, auto-assigned IP address. I can also change it and tell him, no, I want, I want 100 or one, I want 150. It's auto-assigned. If I click on auto-suggest, there is quite a lot of documentation inside, so it tells you why or how has it been auto-suggested and stuff like that. OK, operating system is simply FreeBSD. Host will be in build mode when created. Uh, I am using not any partition tables. And here I could specify a different root password. So let's get to it. OK, let's make the host. So. It's here. So we have now a demo VBOX host showing a B cells pending installation. Now we go back to VirtualBox. 
I will simply fire up the host. So now what we can see, the image is loading, the image I have provided, the HDHCP, now it's integrated into MDisk, now it's going to the boot process will now start. So FreeBSD kernel is loading. I mean, I can now speed this up, but we can also wait this 10 seconds. <laughs> And now what is now happening, MFSBSD is booting. So a complete memory only process. So destroy Geom wipe out, wipes out the hard drive. Base, base TXD kernel TXD are downloaded. Tables are created, FreeBSD distribution is extracted. And for this demonstration, I have added to the system uh, also some puppet logic. So now PKG is bootstrapped. Now the system is already accessing internet. <laughs> Up to this point, everything was done locally. I hope that it will work. The connection so slow. Okay. No, no, no. I am using NAT, so it's it's inside this box, and the box is using NAT. It's connecting via NAT. So now something happened. It just took time. Okay, it's very slow. So I will I will cancel this. I will cancel this puppet part probably because we don't have that much time. So I can tell you what would happen. It would now install puppet from the machine and simply run it and register it on the on the system. At the very end, we will then see the the host has been deployed, and it will also send the first reports to Foreman. Okay. So if there are any questions, we have only a few min minutes left, so please feel free to ask. Yes? Uh, definitely. At the moment, me and Michael Moore are working on it. So that we will be able to host it simply on a FreeBSD system. It's just a Ruby on Rails application and some puppet, puppet path adjustment has to be done, but uh, the problem are the dependencies, you know, like 12 for 15, 15 Ruby gems, yeah, many Ruby gems, many. Hmm. <laughs> okay, any more, yes? Uh, Foreman needs at least 1.9. It should also work on 2.0, but they recommend 1.9. But I, I'm not sure if you need that because it calls puppets not via Ruby, but simply calling the puppet commands directly. So you, theoretically, you could use a different Ruby version for puppet. Should be possible. Okay. Any other questions? Well, thank you for your attention.